All right, this is the niche fragrance list for fall. This is my top 20 niche fragrances for fall 2018. If you wanna find out what they are, stick around. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. I'm gonna jump right to it. I wanna keep this video as short as possible and hopefully it's gonna be under 20 minutes since we have 20 fragrances. One minute for each fragrance approximately. So at uh, number 20 is a new one in my uh, actually, uh, it's not really new. I had a small bottle of it and I have a review up for it, but it finished. I ended up buying a bottle. This is Amouage Memoir Man, this one right here. This one is a really beautiful, uh, dark and aromatic, uh, so, like a woody fougere fragrance. F uh, most, uh, actually it focuses on like a licorice-y kind of anise vibe. So if you like that sort of thing, this is really quite lovely. Um, it's not potent, um, it doesn't come off very potent, so that's why I find it to be very appropriate for the fall or uh, for autumn wear. So if you don't know Amouage Memoir Man, check out my review. It's from a smaller bottle, but uh, this is the brand new bottle that I just picked up, purchased myself. Memoir Man number 20. Next up, it is a house called Fong Dang. This is The Calling, this one right here. And this is a, utilizes a dominant note of lavender. And I find lavender to be very, very fall, autumn appropriate. This one is actually taking the lavender into a slightly gourmand direction. And if you like that sort of thing, you will really love this one. It is actually my favorite from this house. And I fell in love with it immediately. Next to Craving and Artist, those are the two other ones. Uh, that I like from this house and I also own artists but I wanted it was a toss-up between the two and I decided to feature this one because of that lavender note and I love lavender and fall and autumn is perfect for lavender so this is the calling from Feng Dang check it out if you don't know it this next one at number 18 is a fall or autumn appropriate fragrance because it utilizes one of those notes that is found and utilized or consumed in the fall or autumn this is Etat Libre de Oranges like this with a dominant pumpkin note along with ginger, orange blossom, immortelle. A very dry kind of uh, fall appropriate. It's got this beautiful uh, brightness to it from the neroli note, but there's like this denseness. Uh, the pumpkin, uh, you can, you know, when you've carved a pumpkin, you know that that denseness inside it, all of the stuff, you can smell it in here with that ginger it's truly a gorgeous scent i do have a review of this one up as well do check it out i quite like this one and i think it's very very appropriate for fall um, it is tilda swinton like this so some guys might think think it's on the feminine side i guess i don't really find it to be very feminine it's got immortelle in it and it's also got orange blossom so um those flowers don't scream feminine to me but it, it comes off a bit feminine i guess to men but check it out Try it, you'll like it, I think. This next one is from a house called Orza El Le Grand from Paris, and I'm in love with this one. It's my latest or most recent pickup from this house. This is Vetiver Royal Bourbon, this one. Now this is vetiver, and I love vetiver, of course, but this is a boozy vetiver. That's why you have that bourbon word in it. And who doesn't love a boozy kind of vetiver, you know? This is really, really beautiful. It's quite awesome. It's different for any other vetivers I have because it does have that boozy quality, but you can smell the vetiver and you can also smell something boozy, uh, like a drink, a liqueur. Very, very cool, love it. So this is uh, uh, Orza El Le Grand and it is vetiver royal bourbon. Also, I wanted to mention again, these are all very fall appropriate fragrances. I wanted to make sure that they're not overwhelming and really, really strong, that are more appropriate for winter time. So I had to kind of make sure I, included fragrances that are not really intense and heavy and there were some fragrances I wanted to feature on the list but I took them out because they did come off very intense and heavy and I find this very very appropriate for fall. So the next one at number 16 is Tempo from Diptyque, uh, another beautiful uh, creation from this house. It's got this beautiful sexiness about it that I really love and it brings back these scent memories of when I smelled patchouli on some a uh, woman that I knew as I was growing up um, at one point in my life. Um, uh, just as that patchouli in here comes off like that. And I think it's just beautiful, really, really sexy. Something about it is just really sexy about it. And it has a green vibe because of that mate note in here. So it's got a bit of like a tea-like vibe, but it doesn't 
come off uh, like identically like tea because it is mate after all because it has green touches. This also kind of reminds me of Guerlain's L'Instant de Guerlain Pont Homme Extreme. A little different but has similarities because of that patchouli. Uh, if you like that fragrance you might want to check this out as well. So this is Tempo at number 16. Next up another fall appropriate fragrance from the house of Atelier Cologne. This is um, Cafe Tuberosa. So coffee, rose, tuberose, bit of a chocolatey touch, beautiful fall fragrance. It's warm, it's cuddly, it's still floral, it's got you know this uh, coffee note. Just wonderful, wonderful fragrance. This has become one of my favorite releases from this house next to Rose and Anime and they've been just cranking out some awesome, awesome releases and this is one of their awesome releases. So check it out if you like coffee scents, if you like tuberose scents, if you like rose scents, this is one that you must try. Cafe Tuberosa at number 15. Going to the house of Kerosene and I'm putting in Unknown Pleasures at number 14 and this is a really delicious um, delicious gourmand. And what I was going to say was, it, as soon as I put it in my nose, I, ne I never thought of it this way, but it reminded me of the days when I was young and helping my mom cook cakes and a batter, mixing it, and I used to put lemon rind in it. That's what it smells like. Delicious. Absolutely delicious. It's like when you, you know, do the lemon rind on top of the batter and that combo of the doughy batter and the lemon. It's just really, really beautiful. One of my favorite gourmands. I would have slipped this up higher. Uh, it definitely will be higher on a gourmand list, but here we have non-gourmand fragrances, so it, it is on the lower end of the list, but truly a delicious. If you like delicious fragrances, check it out. Unknown Pleasures at number 14. Next up, we're going to the house of Baikillian, and this is Black Phantom, this one right here. Now, this one is a boozy a coffee uh, with a caramel, and to me, this smells delicious, uh, absolutely delicious, like drinking a Irish coffee, um, you know, just a coffee with milk and, you know, sweet uh, uh, undertones and a bit of boozy touches from the rum. Absolutely delicious. I love fragrances that are boozy. Boozy fragrances are just to die for for me. I can't get enough of them. And this is a great, great release from this house. One of the best as of late. If you don't know it, this is Black Phantom from By Killian. That was at number 13. At number 12, we're going to the house of Nasumato, and this is Nasumato Bara Onda, this one right here. Now this one's all about boozy whiskey. Boozy vanillic whiskey, and again, Boozy fragrances, you can't go wrong with them. And uh, I absolutely love boozy fragrances, and this one does not disappoint. This is not typical of other Nasamatos where they can be beast mode. This one doesn't scream beast mode to me. It's more like fall appropriate. It doesn't, it's not loud, but it's also not a wimp, so it's perfect. But smells delicious. If you like boozy fragrances, this is a must try. This is Baraonda from Nasamato at number 12. Next up, we're going to the house of Memo Paris. This is Italian leather, this one right here. And I added this one because this is screams fall to me. It's dry with some sweet underlying uh, notes coming through. Very herbal and green, but it's leather and it's herbal. So that a tomato leaf note in here comes off a very herbal and green and dry. And the leather, of course, is dry as well and it's perfect. If you like green fragrances, if you like tomato leaf, if you like leathers, this is a must try. So check it out, Memo Paris Italian Leather. Love, love, love it. One of my very first bottles from this house. Going to the top 10, number 10, we're going to the house of um, uh, Le Labo, and this is Tenoir 29, this one right here. A very, very unusually beautiful fig fragrance. Sparkly, effervescent, bright. Fig, uh, woody, green, uh, just beautiful. Nuttiness, there's this nuttiness in here and uh, I thought there was a, like a nutty note in here, it's not. It comes off like walnuts, um, but it's not. I don't think there's walnuts listed, but just a just beautiful scent. Um, absolutely, this is one of my favorite Lelabos and I find it to be so, so appropriate for fall. Absolutely appropriate and this is at number uh, 10. Check it out, perfect for fall. If you can't afford a full bottle, get yourself a butt decant or um, sample somehow, but you must try that fragrance. So this next one is from the house of uh, Frederick Mahler. We're going through uh, an Estee Lauder phase. These are Estee Lauder owned niche brands. It's Frederick Mahler, and this is L'Eau de Vey, this one right here. Man, what a classy fragrance. This is all about heliotrope, 
and it's a bit powdery. It's a big, um, slightly sweet, but not overly sweet. Um, it's just kind of almondy. It's heliotrope, so heliotrope kind of smells almondy to me a little bit, but more of a, a like an, a powdery almond rather than like tonka beans, where those come off like almonds as well. Um, it also kind of has a bit of a mimosa touch, and even though I don't like mimosa as a flower too much, here it's absolutely gorgeous. It's very, very underrated fra fragrance from the house of Frederick Mall. It's a recent uh, pickup created by Jean-Claude Elena, but very, very classy fragrance. This is an elegant fragrance. It's not masculine, it's not feminine, it's unisex and very, very elegant. Check it out, Lodive from Frederick Mall, created by Jean-Claude Elena, and that's at number nine. My other um, Estee Lauder owned brand is from By Killian, and this is Straight to Heaven. Boy, this is good. This is so, so good. It's patchouli with brum, another boozy fragrance, and then of course it's got vanilla and it's got dried fruit notes, and absolutely one of the best fragrances out there. Very, very classy, very, very easy to wear. Although I think patchouli can be difficult to some people, but it's not your in-your-face hippy-dippy kind of patchouli. Just very, very easy to access. More on the masculine side, and also uh, in, in warmer temperatures, the sweetness comes through a lot more, uh, but in, in cooler weather, of course, it's more darker and it's more patchouli and woody, uh, but truly wonderful. Straight to Heaven at number eight. Wonderful, wonderful release. Leaving the Estee Lauder, and we're going to um, Nishan A, B612. This one right here, their latest release, it's a fougere. And this one's such a great, great, classy, lavendery, aromatic, beautiful fougere. Just beautiful. As you can see the photo, um, you can see the stars, and I find those kind of like, like sparkles and brightnesses. So in a world of dark, you see this like beautiful light appearing. And that's the kind of uh, experience I have with this because it's very bright for a fougere. It's very classy, not necessarily overly masculine, uh, very easy for women to wear, but I find fougeres to be on the masculine side anyway. So it is definitely on the masculine side, but not necessarily like, like um, heavy, like just totally masculine but wonderful wonderful release from this house um, if you don't know it do check it out it's great great fougere that is at number seven at number six we're going to the house of eight and bob and it is egypt another fougere but a warm and ambery fougere rather than um, like the traditional fougere from b6 b612 from nishane um, this has the fougere touches and it has like, these warm ambery touches and it's not necessarily like in your face fougere but then again it's also not necessarily full on amber but just a beautiful combo of the two a nice balance of the two which makes for a very very classy fragrance I find this house to be very very classy and this one is great I have a review for this one actually I have a review for most of these fragrances if you're curious to find out definitely do check it out I have a review for this as well but when this is really really good it's class all the way check it out it is Egypt from Eight and Bob at number six. Top five, we're going to the top five. This is Balda Afrique, this one right here. Now this is truly wonderful, a great, a very, very fall appropriate fragrance. And if you like fall appropriate fragrances, this is one you must try. It is vetiver again with a marigold note. It's perfect. Uh, not beast mode, it's not heavy. It's, 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 it's vetiver that women really would love, if that makes sense. So, but it's not feminine. I mean, there's nothing feminine about it because the marigold note is a, kind of like a dryish flower. It doesn't scream white flowers. So it does come off kind of like very fall-like to me. And I love this in the fall. It is absolutely wonderful in the fall. So Balda Afrique at number five. Next up, we're going to the house of Bella Bellissima and this is white leather, this one right here. Now this one is a brand that a lot of people don't talk about. I absolutely love this one. It's a leather, not overly animalic, not overly heavy, very, very soft suede leather with fruity notes. Um, there's like a slight ambery touch to it as well. It's bright, not dark, but beautiful, like white amber. It screams white amber and it's exactly that because what leather tends to be dark and I would go with the dark or black uh, leather traditionally, but this one's called white leather and it is very, very appropriate. If you don't know this house, it's very underrated. Check it out. They're not distributed really heavily and it's a UK brand. So it's Bella Bellissima white leather. 
At number three, go into the house of Tower Perfumes, Laird du Desert Marocain. Now notice I didn't put Accur de Desert, they're both very similar to me. I put this one in because this is more fall-like to me. It's not as loud, it's not as heavy. Well, I guess the other one's not heavy either, but to me the other one is a little more intense. It's x concentration. This is Eau de Toilette, but this is a great, great amber, one of the best ambers ever. And um, if you haven't tried it, you must, you must try it. Um, it's from Andy Tower Tower Perfumes. Very dry though, and perfect for the fall. It screams fall because it's a dry um, amber, and I think fall, dry, all kind of go together. So check it out, Laird Desert Marocaine at number three. Next one at number two is Isara from Parfum de Cita, another fougere that's honeyed, slightly ambery, and tobacco, really sexy, beautiful, not masculine, not feminine, unisex, but it's a fougere, as I said, it's a tobacco scent, so combining those notes, but it's really beautiful. Um, it's perfect for fall. I have a review of this with a, a guest, Allison, and we both agreed it's very, very fall appropriate. It's golden colored. It's just really like honeyed, if that makes sense. Isara is wonderful. I hope you get to try it if you like fougeres and tobacco fragrances. That's at number two. And my number one fragrance, again, it could come off a bit heavy, but to me it's not, and I'm on the very last bunches of it. Another amber, it's Maison Francis Christian Grand Soir, this one right here. One of the best fragrances ever created for me. I think it is just wonderful. It's amber, which I love. I love ambers a whole lot, but this one is so easy to wear. So, I mean, it's not light because it has longevity, but it doesn't come off heavy and weighty. Got the sexiness to it. It is very, very good. Very, very good. Probably one of the best creations from Francis Crookchen, at least to me, because I love it. And it is number one, and it's appropriate at number one because it's so good. So this is Maison Francis Crookchen Grand Soir at number one. So there you have it. Those are my 20, top 20 fall fragrances. Guys, what do you think of these fragrances? Have you tried them? Have you worn them? Do you like them? Do you hate them? Do you wish to have them or you got rid of them? Let me know, put some comments down, let's get a conversation started. Also, let me know what you're wearing as far as niche fragrances go this particular fall 2018 season. Otherwise, uh, if you have any questions or comments, please list below. Thanks so much for watching. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye.